Hi, so this is lesson 5.4, reducing the number of terms in a categorical syllogism. This lesson, in this lesson, what we do is we're going to apply our understanding of those three operators we learned in the last chapter, which were conversion, contraposition, and upversion. Um, so that's again, that's conversion, aversion, and contraposition. I won't go over here the difference between those. I'm assuming you remember those. You may need to go back and review that. But essentially, many times we'll be given, in ordinary language, we're given an argument in which um, we have more than three terms. And remember, in order for a categorical syllogism to be in standard form, we need only three terms, the major, the minor, and the middle terms. If those extra terms we have are class complement terms, right, terms like non-photographers and non-animals, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, if they're class complements, we can use those original um, operations of version, conversion, and contraposition in order to reduce the number of terms. And in fact, many times this is a fairly important and innovative strategy we can use for doing better with regards to our categorical syllogisms. And we'll find that once we reduce those terms using the operations, in, then we reconstruct the form of the argument. If it's valid, then we can also say that the original argument that had more than three terms was also valid. Um, so let me give you an example. I have a whiteboard here that I'm going to throw around here to kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. Okay, let me see if I can get it here. All right, so, so first off, you can see here in reducing our, the first argument's in red, right, which says all P or non-W, some E or W, therefore some non-P are not non-E. Now this is obviously a fairly problematic um, argument because as you can see, there's six different terms. So what I've done here is just by using the, the uh, just by using contraposition and upversion in the first two premises, I've been able to translate all P or non-W to all W or non-P. So, similarly, that second premise, all E or W, I've been able to translate as all W are not non-E by using a version. This way I've reduced my terms to just three, right? W, non-P, and non-E, and I left the conclusion the same, which is not some non-P are not non-E. Now, you may have to pause this and really take a look at it to see what I've done, um, but it works perfectly. And if we were to test this for validity, we'd actually flip the two premises around, where the first premise is some W are not non-E, that's because non is the major term. And remember, the major term should always be on the top, not the bottom. So technically, we'd flip those around. And you can see I've done a Venn diagram to show that it's valid. Right? Such that, in fact, if you argue that all Ws are non-Ps, right, um, and some W are not non-Es, you can conclude that some of the non-Ps are not non-Es. If you look in your book on page 272, uh, which is the chapter, you can see that all of this stuff will go over, right? But what I wanted you to see here is that we can reduce the number of terms by using the operations. Now, keep in mind, though, that it's not always going to work. In particular, if you have terms that are not class complements, if you have more terms and those aren't in class complements, the strategy isn't going to work, actually. Um, well, with maybe some fudging you could, but it'll be difficult. But And so for your homework, what you're supposed to do is just go through, I think it's... 10 different ordinary language arguments, symbolize them, and then from the symbolism, then you have to use the operations to reduce the number of terms, and then determine whether or not they're valid. Okay, so I hope this, at least with the whiteboard example, you get a little bit better sense of what we're talking about. But when you read the chapter and go through it, you'll see it works. Okay.